Hi everyone, this is Clarice from Trendy Adventure. We are here today in Dunhuang, a Chinese city located in northwest China. And we are gonna visit grottoes to see beautiful murals today. So let's go! Alright guys, actually I was just kidding. We are in Hangzhou and we are just visiting an exhibition about Dunhuang murals. But I mean, it is still cool, right? So let's go! A lot of foreign friends are coming today to see the exhibition, so let's ask them their first impression before visiting it. Let's go! I'm very curious what will be at the exhibition. I really like architecture and I like traveling. I would like to go to Dunhuang and this would be a good first step. So I really expect that this exhibition will be uh, another view on a Silk Road and on the life of all those people who were there, uh, because uh, my country was also a part of a Silk Road and uh, we have a lot of history connected to this path and uh, it was basically the key to development of this region. Uh, so really expect to like look what really happened there, like what did people look like, what did they care about, maybe there's gonna be a lot of pictures uh, from their ordinary life, like what they did. The founder of this art museum was my college friend and we lived together, played together all the time since the freshman of the year and uh, he, he was an, an art student and I was an engineering student and uh, but the amazing thing is we have a lot in common. We have a passion towards the culture, art, because I used to be an art student but my parents forced me to learn engineering so <laughs> but I still have that passion towards the art. So that's why we, we share a lot of uh, you know interesting stuff together when we were being roommates. And uh, after uh, he graduated from Purdue University, West Lafayette, Indiana, he going he went back to China to start this business. At the beginning, it was very hard, and there's no people to support him. And there's only one friend that that in China supported him, uh, invested a little bit of money so that he can get this project started. And I don't know why he wanted to do that at the beginning. I was the one who kind of uh, went against this idea because I say, you know, it's very hard. Nobody has done that, and the government hasn't been supported yet. And I, you know, as a uh, you know senior students, we always struggle with uh, living, right? So we say, oh, we be the life will be better if you just find a job and uh, just live forever. But he wasn't the man, you know, like what I just said. He wanted to do something bigger, and that's why he started this project. In the year between 1980 to uh, 80, 90, yeah. 1890 to 1914, um, there's a 14 on the record that 14 adventurers come to the Xinjiang uh, to do some the advent, uh, adventures like the, the, the Japanese people, German, Russia, uh, and uh, English people, uh, France. So um, when they see these these wall paintings. Well, they think that's so beautiful. They don't want to just leave there. So, according to their records, if they don't take them, they will be destroyed by the by others. They thought they're doing the good thing. And you know, when the, the first one could cut in the, the wall paintings, the Russians. So when the German they come, they say, okay, Russia is a new coming for the civilized. So so he did a horrible thing. He they, they even condemn their their early behavior, and then they just cut again. <laughs> Yeah, so 
you see that 90% of the wall paintings were they, they were they were separated and uh, they were delivered to uh, each they, they, they were delivered to each country like for the Japanese people um, at that time Korea is Japanese uh, colony so some of them left in the Korean and for the English people uh, India is the colony so some of them left into the India and the majority of them uh, goes back to uh, G uh, German, the Berlin. So they were restored on the wall of the uh, Berlin Asian Art Museum at that time. But unfortunately, during the Second World War II, we, we know the Soviet Union bombed the Berlin. It's, it's very hard to resemble them to, to the garage. So, so they were all lost during then, so nobody talks to them anymore. Yeah. So that's why I decided to, you know, going back to China during the summertime and then help them to with this art exhibition, exhibit, uh, exhibition, yeah. Because this is the first time that they actually show all of the, the paintings they have to the public. They used to do the job, you know, alone and secretly. And no one has known everything they have done before yet. So I would like to take this opportunity to tell the world that this is what they have done to protect the lost murals. So we've been to this exhibition and we met a couple of amazing guides which told, who told us a lot about the art and the story of that times. And what surprised me is um, how the cultures just came together and uh, like all the cultures they were in different places but then they came together on this silk road and they um, did really bring together a lot of really good art pieces um, and it was just amazing how they painted all these huge caves with uh, the paint from made from insects and from stones from everything they could find yeah I think it's really remarkable and for me it was very interesting because um, it also looks a bit like uh, Indian art and it was interesting to learn that sometimes uh, art has no well actually art has uh, never has boundaries that cultures and races they come together and make art very beautiful Alright, our visit is finished now, so today we have learned a lot about this kind of art and also how to protect it and our hearts can be influenced by Chinese culture. So we will leave all the information about this exhibition just in the description. So you can come and have a look, it's in Hangzhou, China. And if you enjoyed the video, you can also give, a, give us a little thumbs up and leave a comment. That was Clarice from Trendy Adventurer, over.